Hey guys, so let's address the new lows of MetaZoo. First of all, this Mike Waddell character is crazy. Uh, you would think that he was operating Pokemon or Magic or he was Richard Garfield or something like that. But he created MetaZoo. Now, whatever you think about MetaZoo, it is an absolute failure. Uh, you might disagree of why it failed. Um, we might have different opinions about that, but I don't. I doubt anyone has a argument that it's not a failure right now. And bankruptcy is a sin. It is, you know, people talk about bankruptcy. Oh, we go bankrupt. We go bankrupt. It's not actually as funny as you think it is. Let me tell you what happens in bankruptcy. In bankruptcy, the lawyers get paid. Lawyers will get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to help Mike Waddell through bankruptcy. Instead of using that money to pay back the vendors, the idea of bankruptcy is very simple. I don't want to pay anyone back. I don't want to pay anyone back. I don't feel like I owe you money. Now, who do we know that MetaZoo owes money? Uh, it owes the players, the players who won the tournaments that they were supposed to be, get, be given these prizes were promised numerous times, including even recently, that they would be paid before 2023. We're now in the middle of 2024. The pre-orders, again, a lot of people bought into this and they still haven't received their native streamer kits among other products that I am less aware of, but the native streamer kit is a big one that they got a lot of orders for and they didn't deliver it and Many people were not able to refund it because refunds, chargebacks are six months. I have no idea who the hell is like not charging back after six months of not receiving something and not making a big... I mean, if this happened in secret layer, which sometimes it happens, you, you get like a delay of a day. You got Reddit up on arms, right? You got like 10 Reddit posts about how the, uh, the secret layer has been delayed. So again, okay, players, customers, uh, vendors, right? they owe vendors a lot of money. And the idea is we pay a lawyer a shit ton of money, we file for bankruptcy, we don't need to pay these players, we don't need to pay these customers, we don't need to pay these vendors, and we just start the business again. Uh, no, that's not legally how it works. And legally what happens is you got to liquidate the company, you have to sell all assets of the company, and the people who file earlier, which typically it will be the vendors because they have lawyers already, um, they, they often probably face this problem. But there are people, and those vendors might be small businesses. I don't really know. We'll find out if this bankruptcy is public. We will find out exactly who the list of vendors is. And all of this stuff will be public, and I will cover it from a legal perspective, probably on my other channel because that's what we do. We actually did Mark's Cards the same way. Mark's Cards was, if you remember, a very popular YouTube channel that people like Card Collector 2 would submit cards to and then he would do grading. They were a million dollars. They took a million dollars of customer funds that should have been used for grading and they spent it on themselves. So the court and the judge, they're going to ask for a detailed list of what did you spend the money on? And that's all going to be public, right? Um, what did you spend the money on? For Mark's cards, what we found out was he had a big salary. His brother had a big salary. His, his wife had a big salary. His brother's wife had a big salary and they're two friends. So for a small little card shop that just started, they had like half a million dollars in salary among six, six people. And the wife and the wife's, uh, the, the, the brother's wife, his wife, and the two friends didn't seem like they did very much. They were listed as cleaning. So the cleaning crew, who, again, a very small store, was being paid over a quarter million dollars a year. A year they were being paid, and that's why they had to dip into the PSA grading fees. They were already prepaid. Very similar to pre-orders. This is exactly how the scam works. You dumbass customers give me your money early, and when it comes time for me to pay PSA or to pay or make the product, or pay the vendor, the money's already gone, because I got Lambo and 10 Ferraris in the driveway for my, me and my family. Right? That's what we found out about Mark's cards. Like, where did all the money go 
no one knew until they filed for bankruptcy and where they specifically, the judge asked them multiple times, where is the money, Marks? Where is the money? And now Marks cannot show his face. Like you understand, Marks cards is an embarrassment to the sports card community. You ask anyone about Marks cards, these influencers, they won't mention his name, right? Um, there, there's some funny videos on sports car radio, like I'm here for the vibes, making fun of him. He is a joke. He will never own a sports car. He will never show his face at a sports card convention again. My word. He's, I mean, if he did, he would be a laughing stock of the industry, right? And that's Mike Waddell. You know, I mean, I don't know why people treat Mike Waddell as if he's a god or he's the second coming of Jesus because he's not. He's not. This is a failure on epic proportions when you have to declare bankruptcy. But well, what about this company? To go by? What? Yeah, what companies, you know, in the card space market have gone bankrupt and have come back? Can you name one? Can you, can you name one card game in this space, which he's in, that has done that? And, and more to the point, like when you don't pay people and you mess with their families, you mess with their paycheck, you mess with their livelihood. I mean, that's not right. You know, that, that's not right. You know, I will make a million more videos about Mike Waddell. I think Mike Waddell doesn't like it. But you ain't getting no Rudy support no more. Your dog, Rudy's gone. He's deleted all your videos. Your dog, Al, 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 Al goes, Al goes Anonymous, he's gone. So if you expect any more positivity and positive press from Argos, ooh, uh, his actions indicate uh, either you know he's uh, he's out, he's tapped out, man. He's he's just trying to sell for whatever he can get, pennies on the dollar. He's selling for pennies on the dollar, right? Um, legally they're effed, and I can tell you this that like in terms of I worked at I interned at a bankruptcy law firm during my second year of law school. And I, I'm just gonna put this out there and you guys can take it with a grain of salt. Like in bankruptcy, you know, the the person bankrupting, there are a lot of people who hate that individual. This this could be vendors, it could be employees without jobs, it could be artists, right? The artists don't have jobs anymore. They were reliant on MetaZoo and the artwork, right? Yet he's got all their original artwork and he's selling them for money, which they're probably not receiving a part of. There's a lot of injustice in bankruptcy because you have a lot of people, employees, vendors, I don't know if they had employees, distributors, whoever they worked with. Those people will remember Mike Waddell. They're going to remember Shaw and Andy. They're going to remember who effed them over and they have other contacts. So for this idea that Meadow Zeus is going to rebound immediately, like unless it gets a really qualified buyer who has a very strong reputation and that buyer still, even if it buys in bankruptcy, they still have to do a lot of reputation management here because the reputation is very bad. But the idea that they could just run the company again and no one would care. No, people are going to care because they care about money. If, if there's anything you need to know about America, when you don't pay a vendor, that vendor is going to talk about you. That vendor is going to make sure all other vendors in their area. And it's the same with me, right? My mar marketing agency, right? I I had a vendor. I had a um, client who didn't pay me, charged back after four months. He can't find another marketing agency to work with in Houston. So he found one in Chicago. And I still troll him to this day sometimes, right? Because his marketing agent sucks. And he can't find a local one. So they're just making like random graphics in like winter times, like winter in Chicago. Anyway, yeah. Be careful who you rip off because you have to understand those people got families, they got friends, and they know other people in the same industry that you probably, if you want to start an exact same business, it's almost impossible because those people, they will remember your name because your name is the one who signed the contract. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Bye, guys.